Let me start with a little bit of review. In the last couple of weeks, the last two weeks, we were talking about how they make a, uh, how they make a piano, how they manufacture one. And Mr. Miles and I uh, were studying that. Miles is an expert now on how pianos are put together. He knows just about everything you need to to make one. Um, and so I'm gonna have some questions for him as to how they, how they do that. And we're gonna run through that really quick just for you guys, because you weren't here for those lectures. That's totally fine. Um, but I want to review that so that everything else that we talk about makes a little bit more sense. Mr. Miles, I have two questions for you to get this class started. The first one, and I, can I unmute you here? No, I can't. All right. Mr. Miles, go ahead and unmute yourself. And I want to ask you how long, you remember, how long did it take to make just one piano? Like years. That's right. Years and years. It took up to two years manufacture just one piano because they got to take all that wood and it's got to dry out and they've got to prep it and shape it and then it's got to dry some more age and so it takes a long time up to two and years then, and then and then after you finish building it you have to deliver it to the person that's right it goes to a showroom floor or into a box into a crate and it waits until somebody wants to look at that piano or work through that piano excellent job miles ethan celine can you give miles a thumbs up for us we've got one from mr james uh, i'll give you one too that was a fantastic answer very good now here's a fun little fact and we didn't cover this it can take up to a month to ship one piano from new york to california across the country. It can take a month to do it because they have to put it in a truck and they have to be very careful when they drive the truck. So usually they, they move very slowly, um, very carefully, and sometimes they use a special truck to deliver it. So it can take, it can take an extra month when you order one. They, they can't just call the UPS and have them deliver it. It takes a special team to, to move the piano to you. So it takes two years, up to two years to manufacture a piano. Um, and it's got all these, all these different parts on the inside. We have, you know, the soundboard, we have the plate, we have the strings and the action. And the action part is what we're gonna be covering uh, today. This is what you call a piano action. There's so much going on here. We've got a key, you can press the key, it moves all of this stuff. And we're gonna be talking about that. But first I have a second question for Mr. Miles. Miles, are you ready? Here's question number two. Okay, so we, we know how long it takes to make a piano. Um, we know all of the pieces there, how long it takes to get delivered. What, what is the heaviest part of the piano? What is it that makes the piano so heavy? The belly. The belly of the piano, the inside of the piano. That is correct. That is a great answer. Thumbs up for that. That was perfect. It can actually crush fingers. That's right. If you, and then that's why they use a big crane. They lower the iron plate into the piano with a crane because if you're holding it with your fingers and you try to set it in, you're going to crush your little fingers and that's not good. That's going to be very bad. So the inside of the piano, specifically the cast iron plate, is the part that weighs the most and it's what makes moving the piano or, or um, uh, escorting the piano around so difficult. Okay, so that's, uh, that's number one. Or, I'm sorry, that's number two. Question number two. Thank you, Miles. That's all the questions I had for you guys. Um, as we get started, Ethan, Celine, are there any particular questions that you would like to ask that I can answer for you as we get started here? About manufacturing pianos, how pianos work. Are there any questions that you have that you want to go over before we get started? Yes, no. Not in particular, no, okay, that's good. Now, we're gonna move into talking about how the piano works. And there's, uh, there's a couple of, um, couple of things that we need to know about. First of all, in the inner workings of the piano, there is no electricity, right? So in a, in a keyboard like the one I have in front of me right now, this is an electric keyboard and it doesn't have it doesn't have any of this in there. There's none of that. It's just a couple of springs and levers. 
but in an actual panel, like the one that I just showed you, the inside, there's no electricity. It's all mechanical, which is, which is on a base level, the definition of a machine is something that you put energy into and that does work for you. It, it multiplies that energy into work. And that's what the panel does. So there's no electricity, there's no sensors, there's no lasers, there's none of that. It's all just wood and metal and some, some leather and some felt. A lot of stuff goes into the piano. What are some things that are in your house that you use every day that do not use electricity? And they can be anything. I want you to think about it, okay? I'm gonna come back to that in just a second, but I want you to be thinking. What are some things that you use every day that do not have electricity running to it? For me, a couple that I can think of. Oh, Celine, you've got your hand up already. Let's see, can I unmute you from here? No, I can't. Unmute your microphone for us and tell us some things that you use that don't. Violin. Your violin, that's right. Your violin does not have electricity going in or coming out. That's very good. Ethan, what's something that you use that does not have electricity? Um, a book. A book, okay, that's right. A book does not have electricity. Now, if you're, if you're like me and you're super lazy, you do a lot of reading on your, on your Kindle, on your iPad, but he's absolutely right. A traditional book, no electricity, absolutely none. Mr. Miles, you're gonna have to unmute your microphone for us. What are some things that, that you use every day that do not have electricity? A trampoline. A trampoline. That's a good one. When I was young, I had a trampoline and I loved it. I have some fun stories to tell you guys about that maybe some other time. But a trampoline does not have electricity going to it. Now the piano, with this lack of electricity, it's amazing to me. What blows my mind is that almost over 300 years ago, somebody built a piano with no power tools. So no, no, you know, um, no drill guns for, for putting screws into things, no, um, you know, band saws, none of that. It was all done by hand with tools by hand. There was no electricity to help them create it. And so as they design it, obviously there's no electricity. They don't operate it with electricity at all. And that's why to me, the piano is one of the coolest machines out there because there's no electricity and it is so cool how all the parts work. So, do you guys have a question? No, okay. Um, we're gonna have a question segment in just a little bit here. There's, there's, there's four major components of a piano, four materials that are used to create how the piano, the, the, the action, how it works. I want you guys to think about, because I'm gonna be coming back to this in a second, I want you guys to think about four materials that you like to do crafts with, okay? When you do crafts, maybe you make cards, maybe you like to glitter paint, maybe you just like to paint or watercolors or something. I want you to think of four materials that you use when you do crafts. Inside a piano, there's four main categories of materials. There's wood from trees, there's metal, there's leather from cows, and there's felt from sheep. And you take all of that stuff and you put it together in, in with all these parts and, and things and it creates a piano. Uh, Mr. Miles, what are some materials that you use in your crafts? Hmm. Honestly, most of the time, paper. Paper? Paper's a good one. What do you like to make with your paper? Paper dolls. Paper dolls, so you like to do origami and you know, folding paper? Uh, not exactly. See, I draw a girl, then I cut it out on the paper. Okay, so you, cut, you, you draw things onto the paper and you cut it out and you make figures and probably objects too. That's cool. Ethan, what are some things that you make your crafts with? Wood, cardboard. Wood, cardboard, those are good ones. And then Miss Celine, what kind of crafts do you like to do and what kind of tools do you use to make them? Do you like to paint, 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 paint
And candy, so you can decorate the candy. Oh, very good. I like that. Um, what do we got there? Is that one of your art projects or school? Oh, that's fun. Lots of school to do. Yeah. So there's in, in anything and everything that we that we create, we need materials to do it. And so in the piano, those are our four primary materials. Wood, metal, leather, and felt. Okay. Now, let's take a look at this. We're going to begin talking about this and how it works. I want you guys to just look at this with me for a second. There is so much going on here. So much stuff. The part that probably most of you recognize the most readily is this, this key right here. It looks just like the key on your piano. It is a key from a piano. And, and that's, that's where this came from, right? This is, this is a key from the piano. And this is the part that you see when you sit down at a piano and you open it up. This is the key, the part that you see. And look how long it is. Look how far back it goes. It's not just there to the edge of the white part that you see. It goes all the way back, woo, way down here. And it works like a giant lever or like a seesaw. Do you guys like the seesaw? Do you remember that one? You guys still have that? Is that in your parks and playgrounds? Teeter-totter seesaw? No. No? Oh, that's a bummer. I love those. I had so much fun with those. Anyway, so it works like a lever. And when you push down on the key in the front, it goes up in the back. And that pushes everything else in the piano into motion. See that? It goes up and down, up and down. Now, the next most recognizable part in here is probably, can you guys still see it if I put it down here? Yeah, is this piece right here, this guy. This is called the hammer, and it looks a lot like a hammer. It's got a long handle and this, this head on it. And its job is to hit stuff. So a hammer, that's its job. It's in the piano and it flies forward and it hits the strings and the strings vibrate like crazy. And that's what makes the sound we hear. Now, just in this hammer itself, it has this wooden core and we have all of this, this felt. It's that, it's uh, from wool, a sheet that goes around the outside, right? This is our, this is where our felt is here, okay? So we have our key and our hammer. And those are the two most recognizable parts going on here. Okay. We have our key down here and our hammer. Now we have this whole big contraption right here. There's so much going on right here. I'm going to break it down for you. Super simple, as simple as possible, as easy as possible. Okay. And to do that, I'm going to actually take out one of these pieces, one of these parts. I'm gonna take the key out so you can see all of this a little bit more clearly. Okay, so now up here, we have this piece, this green piece right down here. And this is the part that the key comes up and touches right there. This is called, it has a really fancy name and you'll probably not hear this anywhere else except for when you're talking about a piano. We call this a whippin. It's a strange word, whippin, W-H-I-P-P-E-N, whippin. And the key press is up on that, and that's what triggers everything else into motion. It's a giant chain reaction. How many links do you need to make a chain? You all know what a chain is, right? You have those steel or plastic rings, and they get connected together, and they move along. A chain reaction is when we, we do something, and it causes us to go and do something else. And then another thing, and another thing, and it moves on and on and on. I want you guys to think about this. I'm gonna give you a minute. I want you to think about chain reactions that happen for you on a daily basis. And here's an example of one for me. And this is a really simple one, and they can be simple. I like simple, it keeps things easy. So a chain reaction that I go through every day is I get up in the morning and I brush my teeth, and I, and I do my hair and all that toothpaste and you know the Listerine and stuff, it makes, it makes me thirsty. So I go get a glass of water and I, and I drink a, a bunch of water. So I, uh, and that's a very simple one. That's a two-step chain and that's all you need in a chain. I brush my teeth and that makes me thirsty. So I go drink some water, okay? Another simple one might be um, 
if you, and, and it involves water too. If you, if you go and make dinner and you eat dinner, it makes you thirsty, so you drink some water, right? I want to hear from you guys some chain reactions, some cause and events that you go through every day. We're gonna start with Ethan. What are some chain reactions that you go through every day? You're gonna to have to unmute yourself first. Oh wait, boom, boom, there we go, all right. Um, what did you just say? What? Just tell them what you just told mommy. But that's not an action. It's okay, it's an action. I'm dominoes. Dominoes, that's a perfect example of a chain it's reaction. It's the right one. You knock one over and it falls and it knocks the other over and it falls and it just keeps going on and on and on. Ooh, you got it right. uh, Mr. Miles, can you think of any chain reactions? Well, most days I wake up at 6.30. And then after I get out of my room, I I go and I bring my I bring the clothes that I'm going to wear for the day into the bathroom. Where after I use the toilet, I changed into them. There you go. That's a that's a good chain reaction. And those those are those are habits and patterns that we build too, and it causes us to move in a certain way throughout our day. It takes step one into step two. Step two goes to step three. That's great. Everybody, you did fantastic. Let's give everybody a thumbs up or in a round of applause. That would be good. So here in our, in our piano action right here, we have a lot of chain reactions and it goes all the way through. Lots of stuff happening. I'm gonna show you the three most important ones, okay? So first of all, the first part of the chain the key presses up on the whipping, and you see this black part right here. This whole thing shifts straight up, straight up. That's the first reaction when you press the key; it goes straight up, right? And this black metal part, or on the, and this in this one, it's plastic. But this one right here, this one moves. Okay, so that's the second part of the chain. This will go up like this, boom, and it moves. That's the first part. Now, as this pushes up, it, it connects right here. Right there is where it connects. And it pushes up on, that's called a hammer butt, right there. So the whipping pushes up, this, this plastic part pushes, part pushes on the hammer butt, which throws the hammer forward, right? That's the next step in our chain, right there. Boom, hammer goes forward, okay? That's the first part of our chain, our first sequence. Whipping goes up, hammer goes forward. Now, the next part in our chain, you see this little metal part down here? This, this happens at the same time, but it's connected to the same part, so it's part of the same chain. This, this silver metal part right here is called a spoon, because it's, it's shaped like a spoon. You can't really see it in there, it's kind of hard to see, but it comes up and it has a head, just like a spoon. And it pushes on this plastic part right here, which raises what's called the damper. Okay. So the whipping, you push the whipping up and it throws the hammer butt forward and lifts. See, look at this little metal part right here, the spoon. Look at that. When you push the whipping, the spoon goes backwards and it lifts the damper. All right. So that's our first series in this chain reaction. That's the big one. Now, the only other part, so part three, I know I said there were two parts. Those are kind of the same part because they happen at the same time. This one happens at the same time too. You see this metal rod right here with this green tip on the end? That is called a, uh, a back check, is what it's called. And look at this, it comes up and it catches the hammer at the end, right at the end. Boom, it catches it and they become friends and they hang out. That's to stop the hammer from bouncing off the string and bouncing a bunch of times, okay? So by just one movement, by pressing the, the, the key, we have these three actions that are happening. The spoon moves the damper, the whipping presses on the hammer butt, and the, um, the back check comes forward and catches the hammer so it doesn't bounce again. All right, so now has everybody, you see all that? Does everybody see how that works? Those three easy steps, whipping moves and pushes on the hammer, the spoon pushes the damper, and uh, the back check, which is attached to the whipping, flies up and catches the hammer. Those three all happen at the same time 
when you press the key. So now I'm going to put the key back into our action model here. There we go. And we're going to take a look at all of that happening all at once. Okay. All you have to do, you start the first domino. You start the first step in the chain and it all goes from there. You press the key, the whipping goes up and mm -hmm. pushes on the hammer butt. Button. He has a question. We'll get to that in just a second. Okay. Pushes on the hammer button, the hammer goes forward. And then the damper is raised at the same time and the back check comes up and grabs the hammer so that it can't bounce again. Celine, you had a question and then Miles, I have a question for you when, when she is done. Celine, what is your question? How do you remember everything? How do I remember everything? I did a lot of studying. I went to school for a long time to learn about how pianos work. Um, and that's how I did it. I read lots of books. In fact, I have, uh, well, I can't show you right now, but I have a stack of books that's about, it's about this tall. It's hard to see, about this tall. I read and I learned all the stuff in all of those books. And it, was, it was a lot of stuff. But that's how I remember everything. I took a long time of patient study, and that's how I got there. Mr. Miles, do you remember from the other day what the function of the damper is? We talked about the function of the hammer. It goes forward and it hits the string, and the string makes sound. Then the back check catches the hammer, so it doesn't bounce again. Last week, or the week before, we talked about the importance of the damper and what it does inside the piano. Do you remember? What does it do? The damper, the part that sits on the string, and when you play it, it comes off the string. When you let the key go, it goes back down. Do you remember what that does? Right, right, right. It helps make the sound? Kind of. Indirectly, that is correct. The damper sits on the string, and it stops the string from making sound. When you press the key, the damper comes off, and then the hammer hits the strings, and they ring. And when you let it go, it falls back down into place and it stops the strings. It's like those big wooden blocks that we were looking at in that giant machine with all the fingers that played the piano. It stopped the strings from ringing. So those three parts all have a really important job and they're all triggered. They're all started when you press the key. That's all. That's it. So this complex machine does a lot of things behind the scenes that you can't see. When you sit down at a piano and you play, all we see is this key going up and down, back and forth. But at the same time, all of this stuff is moving. The whipping and the jack, that's what this is called, it's called a jack, pushes on the hammer butt. It lifts the damper up and it moves the back check forward all at the same time in order to make the piano work. Now, there's a lot of pieces in here to make that work. There's, there's springs, uh, there's, let's see, where is the spring? I can't see it from there. Ah, there's a spring right in there. Little tiny spring, there's hinges everywhere and all the parts that it moves. There's a hinge, there's a hinge, there's one up there, hinges everywhere so that it all moves. But there's no electricity. It's all wood and metal and leather. Let's find some materials. Uh, Ethan, I want you to point out two parts that you can see that are made of felt. Um, felt. Mm -hmm. That part and that part. Oh, you're going to have to be more specific. I can't see where you're pointing. Um, the one, the white part on the hammer. The white part on the hammer. That is correct. This is all felt. This is, that's felt. That is correct. So it's white. We know that. Do we see any other white parts? Um, the, uh, that thing you're pointing at right now. Oh, right here. The damper. That's right. The damper felt is uh, felt. That's why we call it damper felt. Very good. Thank you. Celine, what are two different parts on here that you can see that are made of wood? Where's the wood part, I mean? The, the whole square the, box. 
the whole square box at the bottom? No, no, here. Oh, the long stick? This right the here? Bottle? That's yeah. right. The key is made of wood. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest part. What else can you see? So look at the color of that. Look at the color of the wood. What else is on here that is going to be wood? The last the round thing on the top? Can you talk louder? We can't hear you. She's pointing at the round thing on the top. Right here? Yeah. The middle part right there is made of wood. It's a slightly different color. But this right here, this is felt and the inside is made of wood. You are correct. Mr. Miles, I'm going to point out one of the materials for you and I want to see if you can find some more of it. Okay. I want you to see if you can find some more. So we've done wood, we've done felt. Where are some metal components? Just like our spoon here was made out of metal. Do we see any more metal in here somewhere? Hmm. This part? Wait, you can't see it. Why are you pointing it? Describe it what it looks like. Describe it a little bit. The part that helps hang on the hair, the hammer. Okay, so the back check, is that what you're talking about? Right here? Yeah. This part? Okay. Right there. Yes. That's a metal pin that is attached to. And there's another piece right there. Those two go together. Are there any other metal pieces in here? I showed you one earlier. What is that called? Um, uh, the hand, the hand, the handle of the spoon. The handle of the spoon. The spoon is made out of metal. Yes, that is metal. There's another one that we talked about too. It's the spring. It's it's really hard to see. It's right in there. But also the pin for the for the damper head is metal. And the pins that the, the, the panel key sits on is metal. Now, what was the other material? We said we had wood and metal and felt. Who remembers? I want to see a raise of hands, a show of hands. Who remembers what the fourth component is? Mr. Miles. Oh, hold on one second. Mr. Miles. Uh, well, you raise your hand first. All right, Miles, what is that fourth component? The fourth component. We have wood, felt, metal, and? Leather. Leather. Very good. Leather. Now, there's not a lot of leather. There's only a little bit. And it's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to get in closer. Right here, the back, the part that meets the back check, that's coated with leather. This part in here where the jack connects to the hammer butt, there's some leather in there. And those are the big parts. Those are, those are the big ones. The parts that get rubbed or touched a lot are made out of leather. This leather is really tough. It's really resilient. It's very strong. Okay, let's see. What else we got going on? That covers most of how it works. Let's see. All the, and all the parts that we use in it. Hmm. Celine, what colors do you see? There's lots of great color in here. What are some colors that you can see? You can talk me. White. White, good. Brown. Brown. Black. Black. Red. Red. And green. And green, and it's hard to see but that kind of yellowish, brownish leather is in there too. Lots of great colors. And they color code it all for a reason. Uh, it's to, to organize everything when they're making it and they're putting it all together. Excuse me. They need to know where all of the pieces are and see all of them and be able to work on all of them really well. I want you guys to think about something that you organize at home so that you can easily find it. For me, it's my books. All of my books are organized in a special way so I can go find them really, really fast. Um, it might be your toys, right? Um, maybe it's your schoolwork, something like that. I want you guys to think about something that you organize really well. Now, the reason that they need to organize all the parts is because in a piano factory, even though it takes maybe two years to make a piano, right, up to two years, they usually make them maybe 20 at a time. 20 at a time. And so every, uh, every month, 
maybe they'll start a new 20, right? Because it takes uh, miles, if you remember, it only takes 24 hours for it to sit in the press, and then it goes in storage forever, for six months, right? So every day, it's that, or every month maybe, they're pressing new pianos, and every month they're working on 20 more. So they're always producing pianos and they have all of this material. Pianos are huge, they're enormous. And because of that, there's all of these parts that they're working on. They need, when, they're, when it's all on their workbench and they're laid it out and they're trying to organize stuff and put it together, they need to be able to see really fast where all the parts are. It also helps when you're working on pianos to know which ones are which. And generally, they're all color-coded the same for all the different brands. Um, let's see, let's start with Celine. What are some things that you organize, that you like to have organized so you can find them easily? What? What are some things that you clean up really well all the time? I don't know. My toys. Your toys. Do you have a special place where your toys are supposed to go? Yes. That way you can put them there and you can go find them and, and get the one you need. While we're here, Ethan, what are some things that you organize and how do you organize them? Um, books. Books. How do you like to organize your books? Do you do it by author? Do you do it by color? Do you do it by subject? Sometimes by author. Sometimes by author. Very good. Any other ways? Or by um, series of books. Series of books. That's a good way to do it, too. Very good. Mr. Miles, what do you organize and how do you organize it? I color, well, we color code our Legos. Your Legos, that's a great idea. That way you can find the color and shape and size that you need pretty quickly. You just go in the red box and find your red one or your green box. That makes sense. I like that. Do you like Legos? Legos? Sometimes I play with them. Sometimes? That's good. That's good. Uh, I was telling you, I organize my books in a specific way. I go by size and by category. So I have all of my violin books in one place from smallest to biggest. And then I take all my piano books and I put them all on the shelf next to my violin books from smallest to biggest. That way I know exactly where all of them are and I can see where the sections begin and end. Because if it's going bigger, 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 and all of a sudden I have a smaller book, I know that's where my next subject is and I can start looking there. And I always keep them in the same order so I know I can jump to the section really fast. Okay, great job you guys. Those are good organizational skills that you have. Let's give you a round of applause. That's good stuff. Okay, so we talked now uh, about how the piano is put together the last two weeks, how they make one. Today we talked about how the piano works, how the inside, how the action works in this action model. There's another action model that I want to show you guys, and I want to share that as a resource. Um, let me pull it up really quickly. So you can play with it and you can, you can kind of watch it um, uh, at home and see how, it, uh, see how it works and how it comes together. Um, it's called a virtual piano action. Let me share that to your screens now. And we looked at this on day one. Okay, so here is a virtual piano action. Now, this one looks a lot different than the one we were just working with, right? This one is for an upright piano, which is the one in most houses. This piano action is for a grand piano. Now, it looks a little different, but it works the same. Here's the key. It pushes on the whippin. The whippin moves the hammer and lifts the back check up. And catch the hammer. Now in this animation, they don't cover the whole thing, but they, they get a lot of it in there. Um, so here, you guys can, you, there's a little keyboard down here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send this to Mr. James and he can, he can help get it out to you guys. I'm gonna put it in the chat also, a link to it in the chat. 
and you guys can you guys can play with this and look at this and see how it works. You press a key on the piano and it moves the key, which moves the whip in and throws the hammer and lifts the damper all at the same time. And it plays the note. So you can play on this little piano. It's kind of fun. You can do play a little thong. You can make up your own tune, something like that. But now you guys at home, you can pull this up. You can look at this and you can play with this virtual action model. Okay. Now, again, this is for a grand piano. This is not an upright piano like we were looking at. Uh, Ethan, did you have a question? No, that was just your arm. No. Okay. All right. So now you guys know the basics of how a piano works. You press the key and it moves the whip in, the damper, and the back check all at the same time. And the hammer flies forward and it hits the strings. And that's how we uh, that's how we make the sound on the on the piano. So it's a complicated machine. It has a lot of parts in it, a lot of parts that move. We're going to talk about some other machines that are complicated. I want you guys to, to think about that. I'm going to ask you. Here are some machines that I think are really complicated, like the piano. Now, these machines, you can think of ones that use electricity too, right? Not just mechanical ones, um, strictly mechanical. You can look at um, electric ones too. Some, so some machines for me that are really complicated, like the piano, would be a tractor, right? Like a like a tractor that they dig all the holes with, right? It's got all the it's got the all the moving parts in the engine, and it has that arm, that crane that comes down and does all the scooping. That's pretty complicated. That's pretty cool. Another complicated machine. Let's see. How about a blender? Like in your kitchens, a blender. You put you know fresh fruit in there and some almond milk and honey, and you make a smoothie, right? Is a blender really complicated? Well, maybe not if you're a blender maker, but I think blenders are complicated. It's got a little motor inside and it turns a, a, a little rod that connects to your blade and it grinds stuff up in your blender. Mr. Miles, what are some complicated machines? A computer. A computer, yes. A like com the one you're viewing. You like the one I'm using for FaceTime, which is actually my dad's. That's right, computers are still machines. Less so now than they used to be, but it used to be there were, there were a lot more moving parts inside a computer, especially original computers. Way back in the day, there were giant tubes and vacuums and sensors and pads and little printouts and computers weren't very smart, but there were lots of parts. Celine, do you have a machine? What is your machine? Now, now you can talk. I you see. Celine, what were you gonna say? Electric violin. Electric violin. An electric violin, that's a thing, and those are really cool, but yes. It's a violin, uh, but usually a, a normal violin, but then they take it and they put microphones and uh, pickups in it and they attach it to you know, a preamp and, it, and then it plugs into a, a socket and you can put a cable into it and then it hooks up to an amplifier. Yes, electric uh, violins are an interesting machine. Ethan, do you have any complex machines? Um, electronics. Okay, we talked about computers and... Like a jacuzzi. A jacuzzi? Hmm. We have a jacuzzi at our house with pillows and lights and a water fountain. Oh, good. Well, I don't have a jacuzzi. I wish I had one. I have a pool in my, in my community, but they don't let us use it right now, so that's no fun. But a jacuzzi has parts from a machine. It's got a heater in it. Uh, some coils, electricity goes to the coils and heats up uh, the, the heating element and the water runs over the heating element and into the jacuzzi and mixes with the rest of the water. And there's a pump that cycles the water to keep it all hot 
And uh, yes, a jacuzzi has parts of machines in there. So machines are all around us and whether there's electricity in them or not, a lot of them are really complicated. A lot of them have really uh, complex designs and functions and ways that they work. And you need a lot of knowledge to, to fix them if they break, right? Um, and sometimes that can be challenging to do. Fortunately for us, all of our piano manufacturers today are very skilled, very knowledgeable, and they do a fantastic job putting together pianos for us to use. They try to make them as maintenance free as possible, but it's not always the case. Pianos need regular service. Every six months they need to be tuned. Once a year they should be regulated, which is where you go through and you make sure all the mechanical components are working just right. On top of that, you're hitting the hammers when they, when they beat against the strings over and over and over again, the hammers become deformed or misformed and you've got to fix the shape of the hammer. You've got to do that a lot. You have to voice the piano. So much stuff to do for a piano to keep it running and working well. But all of that said, a piano is a pretty tough instrument and it can go, uh, it can, it can, if you, if you take care of it, it'll last a very, very long time. Some of our oldest pianos today are about 300 years old. We still have pianos from so far, so long ago. Now, we don't use those pianos. For the most part, they're in museums. Then you can go look at them. And once in a while, they'll have uh, you know, a professional pianist come through and play it and talk about it. But pianos will last a very long time if you take care of them. Just like anything else, Celine, right? Our violin, when we're done with it, we clean it. We put it away gently. We put the bow away. We close the case. And we treat the case like a baby. We don't want to bump it into stuff or drop it. We don't want to hurt the violin. Okay, so now you guys know how pianos work on the inside. This is our last call for any questions or comments. Is there anything that you guys want to ask or that you want to add? No. No, okay. Very good. Now, I hope that you know a little bit more today about how the piano works, how it's put together, how long it takes to make one, how important it is to maintain it and keep it working well. Um, if you enjoyed today's class, you're really gonna enjoy my class on Tuesday. Tuesday at 12 o'clock, we are having a, a piano class, not about what, how the piano works, but we're working on a song to play on Tuesday at 12 o'clock, I'd like you to join us. Last week, we did the first part of the song, we're learning how to play Amazing Grace. And last week we went through the melody and all the parts of the melody. And this week on Tuesday, next week on Tuesday, we're gonna be going through some more of the left hand, how to play that, how to turn it into chords and harmonize with yourself. So if you guys want to do more stuff with the piano, tune in on Tuesday at 12 o'clock and we're gonna be learning some more stuff. You guys have been absolutely fantastic today. I thoroughly enjoyed all of your questions and comments. I enjoyed working with you guys, showing you things. This stuff to me is super cool. I love this kind of stuff. And I hope that after today, you've learned a little bit and you can at least appreciate it a little bit more too. We're going to be hanging out for the next eight minutes or so. Uh, feel free to ask questions. I'm going to ask you guys some questions just for fun. It doesn't have to be piano related. We're just going to spend some time with each other, okay? Great class today, and I hope to see you guys. Thank you. You are super.